Dear students, today we are going to start a lecture on one of the important topics in aquaculture that is site selection, construction and management of fish ponds. But today we shall be dealing with the site selection. When we think of to carry on the PC culture, we require a pond. So for rearing of the fishes, we require a pond and the pond is generally defined as artificially constructed shallow body of water where there are abundant aquatic plants. Ponds are generally rectangular in shape. An ideal pond has a depth between 6 to 7 feet for better productivity. Several ponds are one third to one half of an acre in area. A fish pond is an enclosure, whether earthen or concrete. It is built to retain water for the purpose of growing fish to the table size for household consumption or it can also be cultured to generate additional income. Fish pond can be constructed on either small scale or large scale basis. Success in fish farming and economy of the construction would depend largely on the selection of a suitable site for the fish farm. The main considerations before the selection of a site for the construction of a fish pond are mostly three. The first one is topography, the second one is soil, and the third one is the supply of water. When we talk about the topography, the term topography means the surface feature of an area and is important both from the point of view of the construction and from the maintenance point of view. When we talk about the topography, we mostly prefer an area which is gently sloping in a wide valley, a bowl shaped area with high lanes on the three sides and a narrow inlet on the fourth side. Because this very site, this very part of the land, it becomes economical for an aquaculturist or a PC, PC culturist to construct a farm. Now, the second important thing is that, that this very area, which is bowl shaped, needs very less money to maintain a pond. When we talk about this very gently sloping and bowl shaped area, the photographs here depict that these are like the bowl shaped areas wherein the pond can be constructed and it is very much economical if the ponds are constructed in these regions. The second most important thing which is to be kept in mind before the construction of a fish pond is soil. The soil must be impervious so as to overcome the seepage. Rocky and sandy soil as well as limestone areas must be avoided. Heavy and silty clay they are regarded as suitable for the construction of the fish pond. The porous soil is considered unsuitable for stocking ponds whereas for the nursery ponds and the rearing ponds they can be constructed because the water is stored there for a shorter duration of time. Now, how do we know that this very soil is suitable for the construction of a fish pond? We, we generally test the soil for many reasons. The first test that is done to know whether the soil is, um, is uh, clay or sandy, what we do, it is called as the through the ball test. What we do in this, as you are seeing in the, in the figure, we take handful of the moist soil and squeeze it into the ball, throw the ball in the air up to, up to 50 centimeter and then catch it. If the ball falls apart, it is poor soil and it, it has much sand. So this very soil is not very good for the construction of a fish pond. But if the ball which is thrown up to 50 centimeter and is holded back and is cast back and it probably sticks together or it maintains the round form, we say that this very soil is good for the construction of the fish pond. 
The second important um, test is squeeze the ball test. What we do in this method that we take handful of the soil and we sprinkle a little bit of water and then we squeeze, we squeeze this very, very soil and then we open the, we open our pond, we open our palm. If the soil retains the shape of a palm, then we say that the, this very soil is good. If it does not retain the shape of the hand, then it is, it has too much of the sand. The third important test is groundwater test. What we do in this very method, we dig a hole and then we cover it with the leaves and then leave it overnight. If the hole, next morning if the hole is filled with water, we say yes the water level is very high and it is very much suitable for the culture of the fishes. But only one thing is there that, that this kind of the pond where the groundwater level is very high, it needs a longer duration of period to be emptied if the pond needs to be emptied. The second thing that if we dig a pond, if we dig a hole and then in the next morning the this very hole is not filled with water, it means water level is low. But don't be upset that what we have to do, then we have to check it for the water permeability test. Now what is this water permeability test? What we do in this very method that we dig the hole up to one meter and we fill it with water, leave it overnight by covering it with the help of the leaves. If the next morning the whole of the pond gets emptied, then it is a matter of concern. It means that there is seepage of the water. But for an aquaculturist, you don't have to worry on the first night. Then they repeat this very procedure second time again, next night, fill it again with water and then cover it with leaves. In the next night, if it is emptied again, then it is not suitable for the construction of a fish pond. But if it retains water, if it retains water, then it is very much good for the culture or the construction of a fish pond. Now, what happens during the first night that mostly the soil particles are dry and when we fill it with water, they swell up and they tighten the spaces among the soil particles. So next night when we again fill it with water, the water does not seep, water is becomes impervious and that is why it is very much good for the construction of a fish pond. Third important thing, third important criteria is the supply of the water. Now the when the topography is good, the soil is good, then we think that what should be the supply of the water and what and how we can we can get a good supply of the water, good and a cheap supply of the water. Now for that we have we have different kinds of the you can say sources. The source is rainfall, source is runoff, source is natural water, it can be springs, it can be well, it can be tube well. It can be a reservoir nearby, it can be a pond, it can be a lake, but there are certain disadvantages in certain, uh, in certain water uh, sources. Now, when we, when we talk about the uh, rainfall, there is dependency that we have to depend. Most of the time, if there is no rainfall during the particular season when the fishes are being uh, cultured, when the fishes are in the pond, then the whole crop will be destroyed. The second important um, dependency is on the runoff. The ponds can be filled when water from the surrounding land area runs into them, the water gets filled. But one problem is there that the high turbidity, the runoff brings along with it, uh, with it the many particles uh, of the soil which are mud muddy, they can clog the gills of the, they can clog the gills of the fishes. And even though they bring along with themselves different kinds of pollutants which can be harmful for the fishes.
Then we do have the natural sources such as rivers, lakes, streams. This is also a source of the uh, natural water. But there is contamination. Most of the times animals, plants and rotting organisms can ca cause diseases and there is a danger of pesticides and other pollutants in water because these waters bring pesticides along with them which we spray in our horticultural fields or agricultural fields. Then important source are many a times springs which can be underground spring or the upper ground spring. But the only problem with these springs is that it has low oxygen level and low temperature. Now, wells can also serve as a good source of the supply of the water, but whether a tube well, whether a bore well, any kind of the well can be used for the to meet the demand of the water. But uh, this very low supply of the oxygen level and the low temperature are the main disadvantages of the wells. Now, before the construction of the fish pond, we should also keep in mind that the supply of the water should be nearby. That we should not waste our money by digging the channels, by digging the uh, rivulets or the streams or the channels to bring water from the source to our pond. So this consumes a lot of the money and the aquaculturist can be economically, um, can uh, have an economic loss for this. Uh, next video will be on the pond design and construction. It is my request to you all. Please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on the videos pertaining to zoology and fish and fisheries mostly. Thank you very much.